Hello friends, this is Reza Rat from Radicad. Uh, in this video today, I'm in uh, Dallas in the hotel <laughs> recording this video. I want to talk about one of the features in Power Query that you may not have known about it or you may not have used it, which is Power Query ability to get data from Exchange Server, which basically means that if you have Office 365 accounts, you can connect to your email account and get uh, your inbox. Things such as, for example, getting the attachment emails with specific attachments like that CSV file that you get on a monthly basis, things like that. With Power Query, you can get that, you can extract it, you can expand it, combine the data, all of that with Power Query, either in Power BI Desktop or in Power BI Service, which can be part of Power BI data flows or uh, data flow Gen 2 as part of Fabric data flows. Let's uh, see how this, is work, uh, how this works in a real scenario. <music> Okay, to show you how this works, I'm going to switch to my screen uh, immediately. So here you can see my screen, like I have this type of email that I'm going to send uh, to myself. Now, uh, I'll start with a basic example, uh, which I will just send a couple of uh, these files. Uh, and let's say this is an email with some explanation. I send this email to myself, which has a bunch of CSV files. These CSV files are uh, Fitbit activities, uh, which um, they have the same structure, but different files. Now, these files might come as separate um, uh, as separate emails or they might come in one email. Uh, let's say this is one of the emails that I'm going to send and I'll just save the subject because I want to be able to search it. So that is one email. And then I'm going to send one more email similar to that as well. Uh, so let's just do one more new email as well uh, so that I have two uh, emails and you can see their differences and it should take a little bit of time for the email to, to reach. You see that email already uh, is uh, received by me. It is actually sent by me, received by me, uh, which is okay. I'm going to send another email to myself uh, with the same subject. Uh, now subjects can be also different. Uh, you can define whatever rule or logic you want. I'm just giving you one sample example. Um, so let's say in this one, I just have one file uh, and sending this. So, so imagine this scenario that we have uh, these emails arriving to your inbox on a monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis, and they contain some important information that you want to extract it. Uh, you don't need another tool to extract it, like a PowerShell script to extract it. Uh, and then use Power BI or Power Query to analyze it. You can use Power Query from scratch to connect to this. So let's go and do that. Uh, now I'm using Power Query in Power BI Desktop, but the same thing is available in Power Query online, um, which can be using Microsoft Fabric as well. So here when I say get data, which is the Power Query part of it, when I click on more, uh, I'll be able to see all the data sources available to get data from uh, and under other, one of the data sources is Microsoft Exchange. Let me enable my zooming so that it can zoom in better. So here it is, uh, Microsoft Exchange, as you can see it. And uh, this is one of the data sources. Uh, now, uh, excuse me for all of these email notification because I'm opening my email so that you can see the impact. That is why this is happening. So, um, so now that I have this, I can click on it. Uh, usually you need to sign in. So you, uh, it asks for your Office 365 or Microsoft Exchange email account. Uh, this won't work with Gmail. I didn't really check it with Gmail, but I don't believe this would work with Gmail. Uh, so you have to authenticate with this. I have already authenticated, so I don't think it is going to ask me for authentication again. Uh, then it would connect to your email and not only it brings your emails, it also brings uh, your other uh, attributes as well, such as your calendar, um, your meeting requests, the people, contacts you have in your Outlook, in tasks, and all of those kind of things, which can be quite helpful. Like for example, you want to analyze the meetings that you have, uh, things like that. Now I can go and select the mail, and when I select mail, then I can go transform data, and this would be all the emails that I have, and not necessarily just this one. While this is opening Power Query Editor, I'll show you this in the website in online as well. This is Power Query Online inside 
uh, Power BI website where I can say get data and more and same exchange server is available in here as well if I search for exchange I should have the same thing over here as well. So it doesn't matter if you use Power Query online or use Power Query inside uh, Power BI desktop. In both cases, you can do that. If you use Power Query online, it is probably better because then you can use that to be loaded inside a lake house or a warehouse and then Power BI from there. But that's a different story. This video is specifically about the Power BI, as uh, Power Query aspect of it. Uh, so the Power Query editor is open. Uh, let me see. This is the Power Query Editor, uh, which is opening. And in Power Query Editor, you will see always a preview of your data. So if you can see some of your emails, that is absolutely fine. And uh, they may not be on the order that you want. So you can go and sort it based on whatever order that you want. I'm waiting for this to load the email list. Here it is. Uh, now you can uh, filter this based on lots of things. Like for example, you expect that email to go to a specific folder in your uh, in your inbox, uh, and uh, you can filter it based on that. Sometimes you have an Outlook rule that automatically pass things into your uh, specific folder, and you can choose that. Or here, I can, for example, filter it based on the subject. You see, uh, the subject that I set is actually here. So I can filter it based on that. Let's filter that. And I would say, well, text filter this, and that is the one that I want to choose. Uh, now for every email, you'll have information about uh, like who sent the email, sender of the email, uh, who this uh, is sent to, because sometimes the email is not just sent to you, sometimes it is sent to a, uh, a group, sometimes it is sent to you, plus some others, uh, plus some other information besides it, which is things such as the attachment, if the email has an attachment or not. Now this is a little bit slow just because my computer is running OBS to record at the same time. So I'm going to close uh, some of these so that it speeds up the process a little bit. So here you can see. Um, now in this case, I, you see I have this also in my sent item and inbox because I sent it to myself. So it is in inbox and sent item. I'm not interested in sent item. I just want one copy of that. So I'll just filter it for the inbox. You, you can apply whatever filter that you want. You, you can even expand the sender here, which is a record. I have a separate video about record structure in Power Query. Uh, I can expand it and this would have the email address of who sent this. So in case you want to ever filter it based on the sender address, this is the way to do that. Uh, in my case, I don't want to do that, right? Uh, then you have things such as who this uh, is sent to, what is the date and time that it is received. Like for example, you are not interested in all emails, you are only interested in emails received in the uh, last uh, one year. So you can come here and do a filter and say in the previous one year, things like that. Anyway, uh, the part that I want to mo mainly focus is that I want the email that has an attachment right in this case they have an attachment and then the attachment itself the attachment itself is those files when i click on the attachment and don't click on the table click on the cell on that you'll see uh, the attachment in this case one of my emails has one attachment file the other one had more than one file so this is basically the main thing that i need from this unless you want also part of the message I, in my case i don't want that so i'll just i just want this column only i right click on this remove other columns, this would be the attachment column that I have. And then I would go and expand it to the underlying structure. In this case, this would be the file structure um, um, or, or the structure of those attachments, which should bring every single file. So here you see all of those files. I have uh, one file coming from one email, another uh, three, three other files coming from other emails. In case you want to bring that email information beside it, you can do that as well, but I'm not interested in this case. Uh, and the last part is the most important part here. This column is the, uh, is the file content itself, the binary column, the attachment content. All other information are like the size of the file, the extension and things like that. This is the column that I want to use actually to combine these files. And when you see a column like this, you see this combine files icon on top of it, which if you click on it, it acts like when you connect to a folder with a bunch of files, it combines them together. It considers one of those files as a sample file, and then it builds a 
custom function and a parameter uh, and a base query based on one of these and then run it for all of those files, combine them together. All of that basically happens in one place using one uh, action called combine files, which is quite helpful when you get data from a folder, same, same thing happens. Uh, so I'll wait for this to combine the files. Here it is. It asks what is the sample file structure that you want to get data from, uh, because in my case, all of those files have the same structure. I just choose the first file, which is OK. Clicking on OK, this would be considered as that base query. Based on that, it creates a parameter for the binary of all of those files, and then a function to do that process for all of those files. I have a separate video about custom functions. I highly recommend going. Uh, have a look at that and finally it combines all of those here you see the combined version now these are columns in that uh, file structure and you see they are all combined you see this structure starting from activities going to um, to that end line in each it is the combined version of, of all of that uh, as i said exactly the same structure of this on the left hand side is creating the base table, parameter, function, all of that is happening when you get data from a folder containing uh, similar structure files. Now, in this case, I want to clean this data as well. Let's do that to make sure that we have a high quality of the data. Now, we can clean this data here, but I wouldn't recommend that um, because then, uh, because it is easier to go to the base query and clean it. The base query would be the query only for one of those files, which is created automatically here, this query. Uh, this is that query. When I click on that query, this is only for one of the files. You see it here. So I can apply my transformations here, and then the combined version would have it. So one of the things is that I don't want any rows that don't have any data. So I click on here, and I say remove empty. So in case I have any blank rows, that would be removed. Or the first row, I don't want that. That just is like a uh, header row or something like that. I don't want that. I want the second row as a header of the column. I want to use that. But the first row, let's get that, remove it. Uh, let's get that removed. So remove top rows, remove top one row in this case. Uh, as you see, when I do these transformations, my uh, combined version also get cleaned up. You see those blank records or records with activities are now gone. Now, the last transformations I want to do is to use this as a header. But if I do this transformation, the other query would break because it has some uh, specific transformations such as change type, which is referring to those column names, column one, column two. But that is not a big worry. I can go and do that transformation and then and come and fix it. When you know how Power Query steps works, you can actually do these things easily. So I'll go to the transform tab and I say use first row as header. So this would bring all of those uh, values as all, all of those first row values as a header and it automatically set the data type which is fine but this one is now returning an error exactly because that last step has used that change type so i'll remove that last step and everything is back to normal the only thing is that all of them has the data type of any abc123 is any uh, in order to get them all uh, having a right data type i select all of these using control a and then I go to transform, detect data type, which would detect it based on the first thousand records and all of them having the right data type. So it's basically just like that. You have, I have, uh, you see I have 122 records in this um, data set with all of these information available in it. Now, this is part of the things. Another part of it is to make sure that this solution that you built is a fail-proof solution. How you can check that? Let's, let me show you another example. Let's say I create a new, uh, email this time using the same uh, using the same subject which was power query uh, if I can remember that power query I'll probably better to go and find it from here it was a step somewhere here yeah that is the title of the email I want to follow the same thing if you don't have all of your emails with the same title it is okay you can filter it based on who sent it based on the period date, things like that. Anyway, I'm going to send this one. And in this one, let's send a couple of files, like these two files. Uh, but this email also have some other things in it. 
And when I send it, it would not be only CSV file in that. There would be probably image file and things like that as well. So let's see how this works. I'll wait for that email to be received in my inbox. And once it is received, I'll refresh this so you see. So the email is received. Let's go and refresh it. I'll click on the last step that we have here. At the moment, we have 122 records. Let's go and refresh this to see if that new data comes in. Uh, we might have some new records, but we might also have some errors. So we'll see how this would work in a second. And based on that, we can go and modify that. So you see, we have 62 records, so even less records than what we had before. So something definitely is happening here. When I scroll all the way down, you see there is an error uh, at the bottom, usually Power Query, when it hits the first error, the very like a fundamental error, it wouldn't go after that to do the transformation. So let's see what is the issue in this case. Uh, so the issue is, uh, let's go a few steps back. So this is the step that I have filtered all of those emails. And then I expanded the senders, I removed all the other columns, and then I expanded the attachment. So here is the attachment. You see, this time my attachments is not CSV files only. It is also some other files. And I don't want those. I just want the CSV files. So this stage would be the stage that I would need one extra transformation here, one extra filter saying that, well, just give me CSV file. And I insert that as a step in between here. And then when, I, when we go to uh, calling that custom function, everything would work. And if I click on that change type of step, you see I have 183 records and no error available here. So back to uh, this screen. Uh, Power Query is a, such a powerful tool. You can use it in Power Query, in Power BI Desktop, or you can use it in Microsoft Fabric online experience to get those information, bring it into a lake house, which would be a much better experience if you do that, um, and incrementally add it, because those emails might be gone after a while. Uh, the main power is that this gives you ability to bring all of those information without needing a third-party tool, without needing a PowerShell script to analyze it, without writing a C-sharp program to analyze it, all of that using Power Query. I haven't written any single line of code. It is all using Power Query on uh, Power Query uh, UI experience, which is such a powerful thing. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye. Thank you.